first let me ask uh, Nardos uh, Bekele Thomas, who's the resident coordinator of the United Nations in South Africa, but has been uh, stationed in many countries throughout Africa, was also interestingly stationed in the Secretary General's office to manage uh, affairs there, so has a broad experience from a UN perspective as well as in country. And Nardos, I wonder if you'd share your perspective on, on regional challenges, opportunities, national and, and overall. Thank you very much. Um, I think you now start by contextualizing everything with the latest development that happened at the General Assembly just uh, three weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, there was a high level meeting conference on universal health care. And there were, I think, seven points which I have gathered from that uh, meeting. The first one is really for universal health care to happen in any of this world, you need political leadership. Political leadership at all levels. And political leadership that makes sure that there is a coordination between governments, vertical and horizontal linkages. Because a health minister is not the political leader. It's all the ministers that have to deliver on that. The second point is we have to uphold the leave no one behind. Um, you know, this is something that the SDGs have been promoting and there should be equity. We cannot subject the marginalized people, the poor people, to only uh, mediocre health services. They have to be eligible to a full-fledged good health service, integrated health service. The third one is quality. Quality is very critical because the MDGs, you're right, uh, Brian, uh, we have delivered on that in Africa. There are primary healthcare centers all over Africa, but the quality is wanting, and Africans need quality health services, and the government has to make sure that that is delivered. The fourth thing is regulate and legislate you have to make sure that health services and medical professionals are really clearly regulated. And that is also not only just from the services point of view, also we just talked this morning from the management perspective also, management of hospitals, management of uh, stock, stock of medicines and, and all this. And that would take us to the training aspect of it. So we need to have trained, skilled professionals to deliver health services. The fifth one, which is critical and very important, is we need to invest and invest better than what we did before. The 15% pledge that we gave in Africa is not all fulfilled, except with very few countries. So we need to invest and we need to move together to deliver health services, we need to have our research institutions, our technology institutions, our academic institutions to all deliver on the promises that the government has given. I give the example of South Africa. In South Africa, people think that you know, South Africa is a sophisticated country. Yes, it is a sophisticated country, but there are two countries in one country. The country that has high tech, you know, healthcare system, which caters for 10 to 15% of the population, and the country that has really mediocre, like least developed country, where there are basic uh, health services, free by the government, um, but which caters to the 80% of the population. And the 5% there and there, we can put it as the middle class being part of the 10% that get uh, high health uh, services. Uh, we have 153 medical schemes. So each organization is obliged to have a medical scheme. The government gives free uh, for all uh, primary care to as long as they go to a public health services. And therefore, you know, the public sector is really stretched, underfunded, and, and really um, does not have all what it takes to cater for the, uh, for the poor. 
Understanding this, the government has taken two important measures. The first one is to introduce the national health insurance scheme because the private sector is monopolized. There are three companies that deliver you know, good services, high tech services to the population. Therefore, you know, and the prices are of course so high uh, that the poor cannot afford it. So the national health insurance scheme, one, aims at lowering the cost of healthcare at all levels, two, make sure that each and every citizen of South Africa gets the healthcare services integrated that it requires. Three, it makes sure that you know, there is a management of information and data in the hands of the people so that they have the liberty, the freedom to choose whatever they want to do. Information about themselves, but the information about the mapping of whole health service facilities in the country. So this is what they are trying to do. It's a very, very tough thing to do. The government spends 717 billion, has pledged actually this year at the State of the Nation's address. The president said that he is going to put in place 717 billion rands per year for healthcare. 717 billion rands translated into dollars is $71.7 billion. As you know, South Africa is a heavy HIV burden country, with the exception of, you know, um, USAID, the PEDFAR program in the Global Fund, the government funds totally the HIV AIDS. So, you know, it's really, government is, is really very, very keen in that. But unfortunately, corruption takes 22 billion rands per year from the 717. And the re recent investigation by the government reveals that, and there is an action now taken to curtail corruption at all levels. So, so we'll probably come back to that, this, this issue of corruption and transparency and governance, but using South Africa as an example of two countries in one and the complexity of the issues, I think is a good one. We'll also hear from Pierre about Nigeria and in, in in using a very large complex country example. Let me